specialized work um, in dealing with the infiltration of churches and religious institutions as well as government. Uh, that, that cover a tremendous uh, number of institutions. And the purpose of that infiltration was what for? Well, the purpose is what the Roman Catholic system has all the time as, a, as her own purpose, is to infiltrate, to penetrate all the areas of life where the Ro Roman Catholic can have control and access for the coming world government. What that means is in preparation for that world government, the Roman Catholic institution, especially since the establishment of the Jesuit order in 1541, throughout all these 500 years, they've been in preparation and in, in, in through infiltration and penetration of every uh, level uh, of society in order to uh, take over uh, the world uh, politically and religiously. There are two doctrines that define very well these uh, these dangerous goals of the Roman Catholic institution. Two doctrines uh, define this very well. One is called the doctrine of the apostolic succession, and that is dealing with the papacy. And the other is the doctrine, the temporal power, and that is dealing with world government. Of course, both, because you can see that even the Pope and his own individual office, he meet those requirements. Uh, he is not only the head of his church, as he called himself, John Paul II, the present Pope, he said he is the pastor of his church. He is not only that, uh, but he is the head of his state, of his, of his country. What that means, he is the head of a political state. Both combinations are in one office there. In, in prophetically speaking, that is what we see in the book of Revelation. Uh, uh, the political power always hand to hand with the religious power. Did you ever come to the point that you were required to destroy human life? Definite. It's part of the oath and induction of any Jesuit that come under the oath and, in and induction. And perhaps you care to, to know that uh, I have revealed a great deal of this in this uh, booklet after Alberto came out, uh, the first part of my testimony, yeah. dealing with my minor seminar and major seminar uh, as we went through these questions. And now you have in double cross, uh, it is a revealing, at least a little part in these pages here, uh, page, uh, let's see, this is 12 and 13 at least, uh, you see that is part of the oath and induction that I was, uh, I was um, taking, uh, as I swear, to take the life uh, not only of kings and princes and, and governors and mayors and, and senators and congressmen, uh, 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 but even my mother or father or brother or sister, whosoever, uh, come to be uh, 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 between the interests of the Roman Catholic system and, and the interest uh, that they pursued. What that means is, if a president uh, of a nation is there to interfere uh, with the interests of the Roman Catholic institution in their, in their pursuit of power, uh, they, uh, they will be crushed. That they'll actually, um, uh, we were granted, I was granted that authority, that power, to exercise that authority, that power. That when any individual, whether it's a child, whether it's a, le whether it's a woman, whether it's an elder man, whether it's a boy, whether it's a girl, uh, whether it's a king or a queen, uh, regardless of who the person is, when that person, that city, that nation, th this uh, country opposed to the uh, goals of the Roman Catholic Institute and interfere with that already uh, call for disaster. Uh, where I prepare Cusigistas, uh, 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 the Legion of Mary, uh, the uh, Blue uh, Army, uh, uh, many of these militants' organizations 
uh, I train and prepare how they can become Baptists, how they can become Adventists, how they can become uh, 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 Methodists, how they can become Presbyterian, how they can become Pentecostal, and all these areas where they must infiltrate any area. You bring up one of the other questions I have, might as well ask it now, uh, particularly the Blue Army. Is that in some way connected with the uh, Fatima? Fatima? That's correct. Is yes. that, that to, to um, protect it? Or that, to... That they, are, they are the army that creates the greatest promotion of that cult, yeah. of that satanic cult, yes, here it's... in the United States. Mm -hmm. In every country, uh, the Roman Catholic system has displayed this promotion uh, uh, to the uh, so-called virgin, there is not uh, uh, even uh, Mary, the, the, the Mary that we know in the Gospel, but a distortion of right. that really, truly Mary of the Gospel, uh, they display to different militant organizations the promotional need for certain saint or virgin, whatever. And yes. the Blue Army is the greatest promoter of the call to Mary here in the United States. The Opus Dei is another arm of the Jesuits. What that means, you have Masons, uh, you have uh, Illuminatis, okay. you, uh, 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 you have the New Age Movement, uh, uh, you have um, uh, the Trilateral Commission, you have the Club of Rome, uh, uh, you have uh, so many others. They are in different areas working uh, 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 through certain programs what they need in that particular area of where these organizations move this, uh, whether there are secret or public organizations, they need to control certain area of certain uh, people. And, and this is where and how they'll be ready to have them under control through these organizations. The opposite, they mainly, they move uh, next to what they call Christian de uh, de uh, democracy. Uh, the so-called Christian democracy is an outgrow of this Opus Dei. It's exactly the words in Latin precisely define that. Uh, uh, the Latin uh, definition is uh, for Opus Dei is the work of God. <laughs> what, they, what that means, the Opus Dei. Opus uh, meaning uh, the work uh, and then uh, you have uh, how you call them, uh, Dei Opus Dei, the work of God. When the Council of Trent occurred, it was controlled by the Jesuits. Yes. How about the Vatican II? Is now, there a connection there? yes, the connection is very, very, very prophetical. I will say uh, this, and I think that uh, will clear the whole uh, point here. Because it's so prophetical that while the Council of Trent was the first Council to be managed by the Jesuit order, the Vatican Council was brought about by the same Jesuit order with the same intention. And you know the intention of the Council of Trent. The intention behind the Council of Trent was the Counter-Reformation. What was the intent of the Vatican Council II? Another Counter-Reformation, but called today, how you call it? Renewal. You see the point? Now, the change was a name, but the intentions were the same. Yes. See, more sophisticated today. Yes. You see, the Counter-Reformation was taken through the uh, to the Council of Trent. That was the entire Counter-Reformation was uh, performed by the Council of Trent, decrees. Then through that time, until today, Vatican Council II came about with the idea of renewal. That means another a step forward and the final, I will say this is the final stage of a Counter-Reformation. Now, how about the charismatic movement? What's, what's the connection with that? The charismatic movement is serving the purpose, uh, as we said, of a, a, one of the many issues. Uh, as we said about Saturdays and Sunday, uh, they'll pick up every issue with different denominations. In the case of the charismatic movement, they pick up the, the charismatic movement because one factor. They could not bring under subjection the Pentecostal denominations. They couldn't. They could not. Even when they went to the ecumenical movement before from 1945 down to our day, since this uh, already starts, as a matter of fact, if you want to know the World Council of Churches, 
started by financed by the Jesuits in Europe in 1945 after the end of the Second World War already, or by the time that the World War was uh, to end, already the Jesuits were at work trying to unite all the Protestants in Europe. Uh, and that was the origin of the World Council of Churches and the Ecumenical Movement. Today the Charismatic Movement is serving that purpose. Where the Pentecostal could not be bring into the Ecumenical Forum, they brought it through the exercise a charismatic gift. Do you consider that Jesuitism uh, to be an occult secret society? It is. It is an occult secret society from the point of view that the Jesuit order what you know of the Jesuit order and what everybody knows of the Jesuit order is not the true, the truly Jesuit order. What that means is even the Jesuits within the Jesuit order, they all are not knowing the secret society, the inner secret society that they are surrounded by. Pity to have even to say that at this point in the history of the United States, in the history of the presidents, has not been other president. Uh, from the time of President Washington, that was the first president to be utilized by the Jesuits. If you were not aware of that, President Washington already was initiated by the Jesuits to bring about the first communication with the Vatican ever known in this country. From there on, uh, uh, President Reagan, uh, to all this time, President Reagan has come to fulfill the greatest, uh, uh, the greatest moment in the history of this conspiracy because no other president has come as close as President Reagan with the Vatican and even uh, uh, not even John F. Kennedy. What that means is they have done to President, Kennedy, uh, to President Reagan what they were not able to do even through a Roman Catholic president. And nevertheless, I will say this, uh, uh, the 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 uh, religious uh, belief of President Kennedy is nothing more, nothing else than another expression of Catholicism. Uh, perhaps I need to uh, to clear this. Uh, Roman Catholicism is not only the Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is still and it has been at work outside the Roman Catholic system. What well, that means, there are many daughters of the Roman Catholic system outside the Roman Catholic system. And as there are many daughters, these daughters have uh, children and of course President Reagan fit within that picture. Uh, his relationship with the Vatican today uh, brought about several things. One of them is the uh, diplomatic relationship with the Vatican. Second, the preparation for the signature of a concordat between the Vatican and the United States. And if you want to know, this never took place overnight. President Reagan was prepared and is here for the task that is performing today as President of the United States by the Jesuits of Rome in the time that he served as a star in a movie that was very well known and still being shown today, a very old movie, about the the uh, uh, football team of Notre Dame. New Rockney. That's correct. <laughs> This is the time that the first contact was made by the Jesuits with Reagan. Jesuits under the stream of an induction, they were not directly to be involved. They only were the, uh, the, uh, the elements, the intellectual uh, element that will prepare this. The case of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, the president, uh, was uh, killed by the Jesuits of Rome, but there was no a Jesuit there involved directly. Nevertheless, it was the Jesuit who prepared the plot against his life and prepared and trained those who were to kill him. They arranged yeah. it. Yes, right. it happened with President Kennedy, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, the assassination of Kennedy is another, another fact um, uh, that can be proved of any time uh, that was order and, and uh, uh, by the Jesuits in order to get rid of a president that already was ashamed to the Roman Catholic institution being Roman Catholic.
you have two different streams. In Abraham Lincoln, you have that there was a man professing to be a Christian, solid Christian, and then there you have a man that professed to be a solid Catholic, but then put to shame his own uh, institution when he was confronted about what he would do as a Roman Catholic president about the Constitution and about the interests of the Roman Catholic institution. When he placed the Constitution of the United States above the canon laws of the institution, he called for disaster. Let me tell you where the Nines of Columbus has done and performed a tremendous job in the United States in education, in public education. The authors of the chaotic situation of the public schools in the United States has been and are the Nines of Columbus in the United States. There's enough uh, left of the old Inquisition. I will say there is, um, there is a new Inquisition today, not even tomorrow, it's at work today, <laughs> and here, uh, even in the United States, and has been always. Uh, there is uh, no replacement of a, a, a new inquisition replacing the old. No, what happened is that the old inquisition, as the years went by, uh, under the sponsorship and guidelines of the Jesuit uh, general and the Jesuit order, they has been they has been changing their devices in their in their tools uh, in their in their um, uh, in their I will say their devices their in their methods you see what happened is the Inquisition is the same Inquisition the Holy Office never closed the door since it was established in 1200 you see it never closed the door as a matter of fact within the Vatican within the Vatican this is an office they never close the door day and night Today have a different name. It happened that they have a different name today, as they have different devices and methods to uh, to uh, uh, bring people to trial. Today the Inquisition is at work. As a matter of fact, you have a book here that is called uh, Night Journey from Rome uh, uh, that we uh, came uh, uh, to publish. A Night Journey from Rome is one of the last converted Roman Catholic priests in the United States, an American priest that was converted to Christ and his gospel about two years ago and came with us to the reading of Alberto, the first part of my testimony. He was Clark Barfield, is his name, a Californian priest. There is the book here, Night Journey from Rome, and here is the most revealing thing about the actual Inquisition in the United States. He was so much aware of the reality of that Inquisition that in his own will, he prevented even his relatives, his own relatives, his own mother, his own relatives, from bringing his body to the Roman Catholic parish the day that he was ready to depart to be with his Lord and Savior. And he almost prophesied, and I will, because exactly that was the intention. Immediately that he was killed and murdered, killed, murdered by the Jesuits of Rome and Detroit, Michigan, through a Roman Catholic doctor, member of the Nines of Columbus. Mm -hmm. Then you can see the Inquisition is alive and well, with different devices, different methods, and a different name. Today they call the office for the preservation of the doctrine and the faith. The uh, work of Alcazar and Rivera. Now these were two Jesuits that are starting already uh, way, uh, way back early and the, uh, before the 1600 already, Rivera and Alcazar were already commissioned to penetrate uh, since uh, the infiltration was very difficult in the days uh, through the Reformation, they can uh, spot an infiltrator very easily in those days because the battle, the struggle was face to face with the Vatican. Then uh, Roman Catholics and the Inquisitors, they have a hard time trying to infiltrate the Christian churches, even in Spain where it was underground completely. They have a hard, difficult time and there was a most very fearful thing to infiltrate and nevertheless they did it. They did infiltrate and this is how they uh, they uh, um, they find many Christians uh, worshiping the Lord uh, in underground places now uh, through infiltration. But in these cases, uh, they were not commissioned under the stream of induction as I was 
uh, under the stream of rain induction, Rivera and Alcázar, they were to work, and then later La Cunza. Uh, there is more, but I will mention these three, the most important ones, in dealing with one special area, prophecy. They were assigned to deal especially with prophecy, with the uh, purpose to do two things, at least, to cover up any prophecy relay to the origin of the Antichrist, relate to the Antichrist, and uh, relate to the papacy, relate to the Antichrist. And second, to cover up any idea that the Roman Catholic institution was never a Christian church, as I pointed out before. What that means is to make possible in, in Bible commentaries in church history that the Roman Catholic institution always will appear as a Christian church falling apostasy and then uh, uh, we need a renewal yeah. and need a renewal. That was the idea that Rivera, Alcázar and La Cruz tried to trace. Among other things they tried to implement the idea that most of the prophecies of the book of Revelation were already fulfilled by the time of Nero. Yeah. What that means is that don't, fo don't worry about prophecies today, don't worry about the Antichrist, don't worry about a one world government, don't worry about nothing Futurism. like that. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Walter Martin uh, has been and confessed by him, as a matter of fact, I could mention that I have a debate already with Mr. Martin, I have already a debate with Mr. Ger uh, Gary Met, and I took them both by surprise. I took Mr. Gary Metz on radio by surprise. I not only persuade him, I force him to answer these accusations and these slanders. And then I took immediately Mr. Walter Martin and Anaheim. And, and both gentlemen, they were not looking uh, really to meet with me uh, they were trying to avoid, if it were all possible, that confrontation that I did have with both. Uh, we have tapes of these confrontations and these debates. Mm. And then Mr. Walter Martin, he himself, even so that I knew his name, and the list of very confident persons by the Jesuit order. What that means is that the Jesuit order will have a list uh, made up in United States of people as well as, in, as institutions they are worth trusting. And Mr. Walter Martin, I even mentioned to him in this confrontation with him that his name was listed in that list. What did he say? He, he said to me, well I don't know why my name is there. I said you should know. He should know. Yes. I said uh, you should know. As a matter of fact, why Mr. Walter Martin 25 years ago he even wrote about the cult to Mary, a book about Mary, and 25 years after, he have a list, as a matter of fact, that I have uh, with me, a list of, of cults where he lists the most dangerous cults, and all who in the list of his most dangerous cults are Christian signs, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, starting with the Mormons, and suddenly I thought, I was expecting that he will place at the top of the most dangerous cult Roman Catholicism by where the Mormons. Now, the Mormons become the victim of Roman Catholicism not only, but become the victim of Mr. Walter Martin, because even the Mormons are the product of Roman Catholicism. The pressure for Sunday in the future is an issue. Is that a product of the, of the Jesuits or, or what do you know about that? Well, what I know is this, that even the Seventh-day Adventist denomination yeah. has been placed under the greatest setup and, and a real setup of all the history of the denomination. And the proof and evidence is that now the, the leadership is already uh, in a position where they themselves cannot play the role of uh, uh, Frankenstein no longer, because they've been unveiled, they've been discovered, and their intents and their true intents and cases where uh, already most of them has been already uh, trained, prepared by Jesuits to be what they are. So, will uh, the this, this Sunday issue seems to be uh, on the president's desk to be signed, the moral majority is pushing for it, the Lawyers Day Alliance has pushed for it from its inception, 
That was one of the reasons it was created. Yes. Um, so in other words, you think that the, the, for example, the Adventist leadership are going to fold up? No, uh, th that is not true. No. In the con, the the how the denomination has been set up yeah. and their uh, keeping of the Sabbath uh, is this: the Roman Catholic institution already, and this is why you had via Koki and some other elements within the denomination. There already has been even honor, honor, I mean, and condecorated by by the Vatican uh, concerning uh, their work, and actually. The Roman Catholic institution uh, is preparing the greater surprise of them all because it's not going to be even Sunday that they are going to be after. It's going to be Saturday, and you will see why. The reason of this is when already Catholicism already uh, came about with the idea during the Vatican Council II that a Roman Catholic Mass that was only to be performed on Sundays as to be the only valid mass for Roman Catholic. Even if they go any other day, Saturday, Friday, there was no valid a mass for their obligations. Now, during the Vatican Council, the second session, suddenly the whole picture changed, and you know what for. The whole picture changed and said, now Saturday mass is considered to be valid mass as Sunday mass. But that means not only that, more than that, Saturday mass can replace Sunday mass. But it's the Protestants, yes. not, not the Jesuits that, that appear to be pushing for the Sunday, for National Sunday Law. Yes, actually, actually, this is to trigger a reaction to really uh, make you for a cover-up. The issue here is not even Saturday, it's not even Sunday. The issue here, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, the issue here is the person of the Antichrist. You see, in, in, in matters of days, right now, the conflict is, is being utilized, the struggle between Saturday and Sunday is being utilized more for the benefit of Roman Catholicism than even for the benefit of the Christian Church. And that is how it has been exploited, to the point that already uh, the Vatican approved, listen to this, approved the publication officially of Via Cocchi, see, and dealing with from uh, his book called From S uh, Saturday to Sunday. Now, if the Vatican go as far as approving a publication as such, what do you think that is happening? Do you see the point here? Yeah. If the Vatican goes as far, telling a, a, an official a member of the denominational body of the Seventh-day Adventist, I am the author of this book, and telling you that you have changed uh, uh, f uh, Saturday to Sunday, that you, uh, as a Roman Catholic, you were the one that changed it. I mean, openly say that there you did this, and the Cardinal Seren comes and says, oh yes, we agree, we did this, we agree. Now, what are they trying to gain by doing this, by accepting this, what they are trying to gain? They are trying to gain the sympathy, they are trying to gain the life, and they are trying to gain the entire denomination as they have gained the Pentecostal, as, as they have gained the Protestants through different other issues. Nevertheless, they touch every other issue except the, as the real issue. Through any other issue, like uh, the, the tongues business, the uh, charismatic gift, you see, they are dealing with their things where they, nobody can see what is behind. In other words, uh, they cannot uh, openly see uh, uh, any evil uh, because uh, you will see the Vatican uh, uh, as a good, uh, uh, in a good position, a renewal position, say, yes, we recognize that we did wrong, we changed uh, uh, from Saturday to Sunday, and we admit this, and we're going to do something about it the Vatican Council did it. You see, we are going to incorporate now officially the Mass on, on the day of Sabbath. You see? Because the Bible is clear. Oh, right? yes. When they go that far, you can see one thing for sure. Now, there is, uh, in this issue, uh, uh, in my own uh, personal belief of the Scripture, you do not see that the issue 
in prophecy is one day or the other. The issue in prophecy is more than a day. It's more than a day. The issue in prophecy is who and where is the Antichrist now. Once that the person perceives the reality and the manifestation of this prophecy, they'll know the rest according to the scripture. But when a person is blind, to the reality of who the Pope is, and the Pope is granting every favor to every other denomination, they'll believe that the Pope is not such a bad guy at all, after all. If you want to do some homework throughout the news media, you will find something. As a matter of fact, not only throughout the news media, but you will find something very interesting even throughout film industry. There are a lot of movies has come and a lot of articles has been write up and a lot of television shows has come out and even movies and, and TV and through radio a lot of talk show has come out dealing with the very issues that I have dealt in these four parts of my testimony. They did not this before. Before 1979 over all these issues everybody was quiet. Every other uh, reporter will never inquire about celibates and the problems of celibates, about lesbian, about gays within the clergy, about the mafia and the relationship of the bishops and the cardinals with the mafia and the clergy, about the uh, uh, about the banks, international bank situation with the Vatican uh, Bank. Nothing of this was ever dealt with except when these testimonies went out, then the news media started dealing, the film industry started dealing with priests that were unfaithful priests, cardinals that were unfaithful cardinals, bishops that were unfaithful bishops. As a matter of fact, even Jesuits within the Jesuit order were sent out immediately to answer to these very issues, to answer in their way. What that means is they went saying from every direction, yes, we recognize that there are priests involved with the mafia, there are even bishops, we recognize there are priests that they have broken their celibates and they have committed a, a fornication and they're still committing fornication, we recognize it, but you see, the church is another matter. The idea always was to tell the Catholic people, tell the Christian world, yes, these things uh, uh, happen, but this is isolated. This is uh, one priest, a bishop, a cardinal, someone that was unfaithful. But this is not the religion. This is not the system. This is not our belief. This is not our life. This is not our conduct. That is what they pretend to do. You have, among even present Jesuits, um, uh, Hans Kahn, uh, the German Jesuits, and then you have Malachi Martin. These men under dispensation, dispensation, what that means, granting them the authority and the power by the Vatican and the, the Jesuit general to go out and uh, speak against the Pope, uh, speak against the liturgy, uh, uh, speak against the clergy, and they will not suffer as communion. You see that uh, they can go now uh, trying to deal with these very issues, trying to justify the regardless of all this commotion, of all this immorality, of all this corruption, of all these crimes. This is different uh, from the from the mother, from the system. Uh, that these are individuals within the clergy, but not the system. And of course, the system is the one that created them all. Has there been a, a certain promotion to create in the United States a, a special way of looking at Roman Catholicism? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. You some mean, type of propaganda special for this yes, country? Yes, definitely. Uh, this is why they have been so successful here in the United States, being a, a, a country of a Protestant inheritance with a Christian beginning uh, right in the 1620 when the pilgrims arrived to the northeast coast of this country and suddenly today is making a, a concordat between the Vatican and the United States. Now what that means, this is the greatest treason ever known to the very founders of this country. I mean, the most direct treason and betrayal that have taken place in this country has taken place and the fact that now this government uh, is looking for fellowship, for relationship with the very with the very criminals that caused the greatest massacre in Europe, by which massacre and through which persecution the pilgrims arrived to the northeast coast of the United States.
Do you believe there is Christians among the Roman Catholics? There are any Christians? And the person said, yes, there are Christians. Oh, I know. My own mother, my own father, you'll see. Uh, they don't believe in all these things. They just go there to witness about Christ. But they are truly Christians. You see the point here. They will say she was not a Christian church, she's not a Christian church, she will not be, but they come and tell you there are Christians within the Roman Catholic institution. That is impossible. A person when is convicted under the Holy Spirit, being a Roman Catholic, the first thing that the person felt and know that she or he must do is to leave Roman Catholicism. Because Roman Catholicism leave first from then and then they leave after. You see, even a person that leave Roman Catholicism without being a Christian, Roman Catholicism is still with the person. What that means is they can leave the physical system, but Roman Catholicism is still with the person. Only Christ can eradicate from the root, Roman Catholicism from the heart of a person.